This is a scared lady. She sees a spider, I think. Uh, in our country, in our culture, spider is a symbol of money, do you know? Is it similar in your countries? When you have a spider in a house in the Czech Republic, it means that money will come. And if you kill the spider, you will not raise any money. So you shouldn't be scared of, of uh, spiders. You should welcome spiders in your home. This lady doesn't. The name of my presentation is Do Something Every Day That Scares You. Mr. Rupert <coughs> said that, and I just got it because it's really, really good advice for a fundraiser. Uh, take it as a challenge. Take it as a task. Take it as a fun. Uh, oh, I did something scary today. Oh, I heard another no. By the way, I never heard no. Did you? Oh, lots. Really? I never. I fundraised for 25 years. They always say something, wow, today I cannot, I already gave, I'm sorry. They apologize for not giving. But they don't say, no, 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 I'm not give, giving you anything. Did you hear that? Well, you see, HIV and AIDS at the time was something people, you would say, hi, this is your lump from the AIDS fund, and they would think, AIDS, bang! Mm -hmm. Really? But yes, it depends on the cost. Yes. It depends on the cost, and it depends on the fundraiser. <laughs> And it depends on your uh, ability to be, to, to, let's say, be a good advocate. And a be, be a good advocate is that you are the case, that you behave like the case, that people should say no to you personally, to you as a person, not to your case. And then it's much harder for that, but I'm sure you do that well. And I never said no, I heard no, so don't be worried. Uh, so this lady represents for me the new trend in fundraising, an innovative trend in the Czech Republic. And as I said, be, being scared is good for me. And it's good for fundraising, because when you are scared, you do things with more enthusiasm, with more passion to get rid of the scareness. Or not. It's up to you. Uh, <coughs> let me tell you a story. In fact, this was... This was this was what I was supposed to share a story. In January this year, <coughs> two ladies came to me, to my office. I work as consultant for fundraising for different NGOs. And these two ladies came from southern Bohemia, from quite small town. And they asked that they have to do fundraising, that they have no clue what is it, that they're very scared. In fact, they need money but they don't know how to get them, and they don't believe that anybody will give them money. They were so nice. We call them alternative ladies. They were just living their cause. So I asked them what they do, and they said that they take care for uh, disabled children from zero age to seven year old, and they work with whole families. You know, when, you, when your child is not okay, they help the family to to get new information and to go over the first scareness of changing their life. They do a very good job. And they work with the whole central of southern Bohemia. They have about 140 families in their network. They visit them, they help them. The families come to their, um, let's call it small school, where they can take their kids for three, four hours help parents to do their stuff, and so on and so on. They do a very good job, but they don't have money. They had some from the government, they still have some from the government, but not enough. They want to help more, and they, don't, they want to have more money for buying petrol to go to the families, more money for their volunteers to help them to go, to train them in how to deal with these families, and so on and so on. They knew very good their case, they knew very good their budget. They didn't have any written one. They were a small association, but they had it in their, in their head. If you ask them for what they need money, they immediately said, well, we need money for the petrol. That much. So th this was the good start for fundraising. The only thing was that they were scared. <laughs> I think that's a good idea, that you know exactly where you need the money for. Yeah. It's first step. So we told what they can do, and I told, and I said, what is fundraising about, and so on, and so on. 
And surprisingly, these ladies, maybe with the same uh, enthusiasm as they do their job, they started to do very grassroots individual fundraising. Let me share with you before the second how they started, showing you uh, another innovation which I feel in the fundraising market in the Czech Republic, and it's a, it's a problem. The problem is that European money are falling down, <coughs> government is giving less and less, and independence, especially of social services, is turn, not, all, not only, but independence, it's turning a little bit more to dependence. And after the last election, I, I am becoming scared from that. So the time is scary uh, for people who would like to do what they want, not for them who want to do what other wants. And there is no money for independence, or less, less money, less money okay, for independence. And small organizations like this, uh, they called IMI uh, organization, they cannot approach European funds. They're too small. Uh, they are dependent on governmental, uh, on governmental support, uh, but it's not enough for them. They are not known. They are not famous. They have no international partnerships. They are not members of any <coughs> international body. They are two ladies and a bunch of volunteers helping 140 families in southern Bohemia. Uh, their annual budget, it's interesting, it's 52,000 euro. That's it. They do these services for 52,000 euro. And half of it they lack for this year. It's not true anymore. You will see the result. Show me what they did the first one. Yeah. 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 Ah, Sorry. technique. Which one? Oh, we've just done it now. Yes. <coughs> yeah. ah. ah. Perfect. Sorry. The first thing they decided that they need to aware public about their cause. And uh, we discussed that the, the cause it's hard to digest. With children, freshly born children with heart disability, well, it's touchy, but it's hard to digest. So they wanted to somehow sh use some fundraising campaign which is more fun. <coughs> because they don't want to be seen as a people working with very heavy cause. They are giving hope. So what they did at first was Grand Prix, Grand Prix Ducks 2012. Do you know, have you heard about this yes. event? Yes. They're happening anywhere. Uh, they were selling these small ducks for about three euro. Uh, in general public, I bought three. <laughs> and they put numbers to these ducks and they made a Grand Prix in the river in České Budějovice, which is the main uh, city of Southern Bohemia. Uh, they invited uh, media, they show it on the web, they made a festival for kids there. Their parents were coming with kids. There were also parents with disabled kids there. So they can see their clients. And finally, they sold over 1,000 ducks in the first year with no money. They just borrow money for ducks and they got donor for anything else. But it was very low cost even. So they got first 1,000 <coughs> potential donors. In fact, they got only 500. Because they came to me in the middle of the campaign and I asked them, when you are selling the duck, do you get contact from people? They said, no. Huh. It's a critical mistake of any fundraiser that you're raising contacts, you're raising people to give you more, again and more, and again and more, and again and more. <laughs> then you don't hear no, because they cannot say no if they already gave you one time. So 500 contacts, because after our meeting they started to collect email address, not for asking them again, but for sending them the result of the race. Each of us was curious how our duck was standing in the Grand Prix. Uh, okay, my duck was not that good, <laughs> but next year it will be better. Can you hear next year, next year? Repeatable event. 
Again, very natural feeling in fundraising. <coughs> Make it repeatable. Next year, most of us will buy again our duck. I will not leave it to anybody. This is my duck now. And more people will join the club of ducks. And in fact, they found out they will now sell bigger ducks like this <laughs> for companies. And not for free euro, but for 300 euro. <laughs> with the name of the company, a special race, and then with a special media cover. So it's an additional innovation to their event and <coughs> fundraising method. And they did it naturally with nothing. So what would be the next step? Those who do not do fundraising, it's very, fundraising it's very natural process. What would you do with these 500 people? Huh? <laughs> What do you do to people who say give you something? You? Yes, thank you. You say thank you immediately, immediately, many times. Report them, thank them, thank them. They get free euro. It's important. They gave their first free euro to save families with disabled children in southern Bohemia. It's great, isn't it? For free euro, that much luck. And they'll give more because they will feel guilty that it's not enough free euro. What they did, they thanked them and they uh, open additional collection for children, for their clients. With agreement with the families, they put on the web the stories of the family. This was the first one, the Danik and Adelka. They describe their disability. They describe what they need. Both of them need a, a special rehabilitation in Slovakia, I think, somewhere. There is some kind of method for helping them. And uh, they collected much more from these donors. Much more by internet. You just put it on web. They thank people, thank you for your free euro. And if you are interested, look at these stories. And I think they collected about oh, one. I'm just re. 20, 50, which is about 15,000 euro, something like that, in two months. Sorry? Yes, I'll be very fast. So what the, now it's fast. The beginning of fundraising is the, the hardest one. Now it's really fast. So they collected additional 15,000 euro. <coughs> what else they offered to those who gave free euro for uh, disabled children in southern Bohemia? They offered them to join the family to become member of their club and to do regular giving. That's a dream of a fundraiser. You're sitting with your computer and money are coming every, every month from the same donor. And you just click on thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is news from my organization. You don't need to go anywhere, ask anybody else because they are already sending the money. So they started the club for those and they called the club for those who are strong enough to help the poor. It's from storytelling, from the Czech Republic, very cultural, that you help the poor people if you're strong enough. They have now about 100 first members of the club, and four members, and these donors, the last thing is going to be in two weeks, is a special theater performance of Mr. Jaroslav Dusche, which is about the five agreements by Don Michael Rees. I don't know if you know this author, but it about, it's about changing your style of thinking, of life, of become independent in your thoughts and dreams. So the whole mission is, in fact, that you can be independent even if you have many disabilities. And facing the disabled kids, you really think, oh, these people cannot do everything I can. But they can. By this philosophy, they can. So we are going to meet in two weeks in the theater in southern Bohemia, we probably, it's sold now, so it's about 250 people is coming. 100 members and possibly another members or Grand Prix duck funds or whatever. So this is what they did in just half a year. In a sense of money, it's several dozens or maybe two, three dozens of thousands uh, of uh, euro which can be easily half of their budget. Remember, 50,000 is their budget. They raise about 20 in half a year with no money. This is what I call the innovation 
of individual giving in the Czech Republic, that you start small. You don't need to wait. You don't need to do direct marketing to 50,000 addresses and hire fundraisers. You just hire a consultant, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> free of charge, raising some information, and start, and do, and act. And you don't need to be big. Because sometimes I feel that, uh, especially from the West, the information about individual giving mm -hmm. is uh, to uh, focused to big organizations by sending mailing or going to streets and uh, asking many people for support, direct marketing, uh, but you don't need to. You just can start from friends or from dogs. Uh, very end, I will, you will have it in your computers, I don't go uh, through it in details, but this is in the Czech Republic the track of individual giving from last four years. You see that individual donors are giving more and more, this is in millions. So, in one, 100 millions, whatever, the average gift is over 3,000 euro, which is interesting. And it's not all the money, because these are money from the financial office, so they do not count with collections. 300. Sorry? 300. 300 what? Euro. 300, sorry. <laughs> you, just, uh, you see my business, but I'm the bravest. I should just say 3,000, and that's it. <laughs> if you look at corporate donors, it's, again, raising. And see that the amount from individuals and corporations, it's about the same. It's a little more from corporations, but if you count with individuals that collections, the street collections are not included, it's about the same. So do not trust too much corporations. Deal with individual donors. The potential is really high there. And if you see the difference in total gifts, well, in financial crisis. It is, there are no money, lack of money in the region, lack of money everywhere now. But giving is raising 5% in four years, the four years of financial crisis. It doesn't mean that there is no crisis, it means that there are more fundraisers. In these four years, the Czech Fundraising Center started a club of fundraisers. We had three in 2008. We have 80 in 2011, joining the club meeting every, every month. So fundraisers are going on and they are asking more. And this is the last message from me for fundraising. Ask. Ask and you will get. Maybe you will hear no sometimes. But mostly in the Czech Republic. This is Netherlands. The, the fundraising market is full. But in the Czech Republic you ask people and they don't say no because maybe they are asked for help for the first time. Friday, I was teaching in faculty, I'm teaching fundraising, and I'm always sending students to the streets to ask people for what they gave. And most of answers are where, well, we didn't give anything because nobody asked us. That's true. The market is empty. So ask, ask, ask. You will hear no, you will hear yes. And remember Henry Russell, the very ancient history of fundraising, you know Henry Russell? And he said what is true, that giving money is a joy, and people do it to feel good. For social recognition, or for their conscience, they can prove themselves that they can do it. Or it simply enables them to express their moral values and convictions. That's true. And if you match this with your cause, you will get money. Good luck. See the bell? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.